Look at this, isn't this incredible? It looks like young Hosanna, and he's playing on a fallen down tree above a pan. And I think it is definitely young Hosanna. Uh, no sign of Shongile, we've just got here. It was quite far away from where we were. And just beautiful golden light on this young male leopard. No sign of his mother or his sister. He's growing up so quickly. Remember this is a live African safari. You can get hold of us by using the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or pop us an email to questions at wildearth.tv. Where's your mother, mister? And your sister for that matter. Oh, a Woodlands Kingfisher just dived into the pan <laughs> next to Hasana there. Now, James is wondering, now that Krula's been mating, and if she happens to become pregnant uh, from this set of mating, would uh, she tolerate Hasana around another set of cubs, or would she force him to move off? It's far more likely she would force him to move off. He is a threat to other cubs, uh, young cubs. He would probably kill them and maybe even eat them. It is not uncommon for male leopards, young male leopards, to eat leopard cubs. How's it Craig? Good, good. Hi everyone. There you go, he's having a drink. Let's try and move into a different spot. Now he is just behind the the log, but I think we might get a nice view through the gap there. How's that, Brian? Here we go. Hello, Mr. Hosana. Isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Now it is unusual for him to be and he's probably been on his on his own for about five or six days now that his mother's been mating. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, uh, whether she comes back to them. I think she will come back to the cubs, even though she has been mating. Uh, but it's going to be very, very interesting to see. Uh, hopefully we will be there for the reunion. Uh, prim, Prim coming. Isn't that stunning? So he is able to survive at the moment. Uh, he'll be catching dwarf mongoose, squirrels. I mean, I heard he actually even caught a diker, so an adult diker, which is a really big meal for a, a young male leopard like him. But uh, and there has been records of young males being independent from as young as six, I mean, sorry, nine months, not six months, nine months old and surviving. But there's something, obviously, I think, maybe a terrapin or a tortoise that's attracting his attention, or sorry, in under there. Hi, Nora. Nora wonders, does it look like he looks like he's full or he's eaten recently? Nora, he doesn't look too uh, unfull. He's, he's, he's not too bad. Uh, he could definitely do with a meal, but he's, he's by no means starving just yet.
So guys, I just need to, I'm the only vehicle here. I just need to control the guys coming in quickly. Mark, uh, you and Ephraim are stand by one and two. So you can see he, he definitely has looked like he has eaten something, but he is by no means a, a very fat cat at the moment. Oh, is he stalking something in there? Is there unsuspecting little critter in that tree fall? Now, Virginia is wondering if he is not already at an age where he will disperse away from his mother's natal area. Uh, no, Virginia, at this age he would get absolutely torn apart by the first female leopard he came upon, let alone uh, a big adult male. He needs to be over two years old and be quite a lot bigger. Uh, he's still a little bit smaller than his mum. Uh, he needs to be substantially bigger before he has a, a really good chance of successfully dispersing. Let's just shoot around. Get a good view of him. Uh, he is definitely turning into one of my, my favorites. He has got quite the little character that's developing. And one must remember, like, lots of different things. Uh, the individual leopards here will have individual characters uh, and sometimes, oh there we go, look at that! Oh he just, sorry, he just jumped across the pan. As I said he's developing this wonderful little character as he gets older. He's after a terrapin. He's going for a terrapin. This could be how he's been surviving. Oh it's gone into a bit deep water for him there. Now he would not get much meat out of that but while his mother's not here, there is a chance he would get enough to survive. So maybe he's been going from wallow to wallow, munching on the terrible tasting terrapins. There we go. So the terrapins popped its head up again. Oh, it popped its head down. There we go. You can see the movement there. That's the terrapin. And he's got his back to young Hosanna. And Hassan has taken his eyes off the, the prize. Hi, uh, Janie, who's our new viewer. Janie would like to know why, terrap oh, why terrapins don't hunt in packs. Why, why leopards don't hunt in prides like lions. Terrapins don't hunt in prides either, I promise. Sorry about that, Janie. I was concentrating on what I was watching and not what I was saying. Uh, well, the reason they don't is they've developed to be solitary hunters. So for them, it's far m they're far more successful as a solitary hunter than they are as a, a group hunter. And then they don't attack things that are as big as lions, so they generally keep to smaller prey, uh, medium to to large, sometimes sized antelope. Oh, the terrapin's coming closer to him. I don't think he wants to get his feet wet though. He's keeping very still. A terrapin almost looks to be mocking you, can't get me, I'm in the water. Now, of course, if he got hungry enough and desperate enough, he, he might go into that water and start fishing for, for, ter for that terrapin. Now, they do have quite a powerful bite, more of a nip. And um, I've seen them nip a buffalo trying to get ticks off their bodies that can create quite a lot of discomfort. There we go. Wouldn't it be funny if he leapt into the mud wallow just like F.W. did, F.A. did this morning? This isn't this incredible. <laughs> Terrapin just managed to gap it at the right time. 
Now, this could be fascinating if he's been surviving on terrapins while his mom's been away. That is absolutely incredible. I have heard of leopards eating terrapins before, but very rarely. Oh, heads popped up. And as we're saying, I'm talk, just talking about FW, and Cyprius saying, FW mentioned that the terrapins smell quite nasty. They do. Well, it's actually their, their dung, and their main defensive mechanism is to discharge the most foul-smelling, uh, sickly, sticky uh, dung, and that's what's what keeps the what keeps them away. Well, helps to keep predators away. Oh, is he going to leap? He, it almost looked like he thought about having a leap across to that little island. Mr. Sana, are you that desperate, boy? Now, of course, this is young Hosanna, but Laura is wondering, does anyone know whether there's been a sighting of Shungile? Uh, not that I've heard, uh, Laura. I haven't heard of any sightings of the female for about a week now. Sorry about that, Brian. Here is the terrapin. It's moved across. It's got a little spit of land in between. Oh, he's he's leaning up to try and see over. Now he could easily make that leap, but he doesn't particularly want to get wet. Now, Kathy would like to know, do big cats not swim? It's not that they can't swim, and they just don't like swimming. And you must remember, a lot of animal behavior is area-specific rather than species-specific. So leopards that live in places like the Congolese rainforests and the Okavango Delta will regularly swim between islands. But leopards that live in the dry low fault of South Africa uh, don't swim very often. Uh, if they can help it at all. They would rather find a narrow spot where they can leap. Is that terrapin? I can't see where the terrapin is anymore. More of a behind you isn't with the 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 one sati Karula. Oh, see, he spotted he spotted the terrapins having a big party uh, on the opposite side to where he is. You can see that frothing up the water underneath that log, a little bit more to the left there. Here we go. You can see all the making a big, big ruckus, or as terrapin ruckuses go. Just trying to see what he's going to do. And he might come back towards us. We're going to have a look now. Let's roll forward ever so slightly. Now 
Our Lady Macbeth says food or wet water. Big decision. Steph, Steph. Uh, Steph, it's just a uh, curler's mumping pan, just one, yeah. Ingwe? AFM. Kobe, thanks. Well, there we go. That's an interesting update from the guys in the east. They have got Karula probably about 400 meters, 500 meters from here, but outside of our traverse, so, and still south of the boundary. So it's going to be interesting to see if she comes into this area now. Fingers crossed. Sounds like there's another leopard just being found in Torchwood. I'm just going to try to see if we can find out who it is. So look at him, he's watching carefully. Now, I just want to find out from Mike which leopard that is. I think maybe it's that Tangana who we spent most of our time tracking. Mike, can you confirm that that's Tangana? Oh, he got his foot wet. <laughs> Gobi, thanks. So it seems like Tingana, who we've been tracking all afternoon, managed to sneak past us into Torchwood. Hmm, he must have moved during the heat of the day. I think we were just two steps behind him, but fortunately, we're right next to the gorgeous young Hosanna.